A very good evening everybody and hope your Friday, hope your week has gone well. Welcome to Celtic Spirituality Reflection as from St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. We travel together, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Those words, we travel together, do have a little bit of a challenge, especially maybe on this the 5th of November, where here in the UK uh, we remember Guy Fawkes, Bonfire Night, attempt to blow up Parliament, uh, sad prejudice and persecution of Catholics, and uh, sad division between Christian denominations. And so our statement, we travel together, is a moment of challenge as well as encouragement and excitement that we travel together with one another in Christ, whatever our secondary differences may be. And mindful of the enfolding love of God. And so these verses, this verse from Psalm 125, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Amen. Part of our unity is the creed as received through the uh, in the church through the centuries and this is version used in the Isle of Iona. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages and his kingdom shall come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection, and of eternal life. Amen. Tuesday was All Souls Day and as some of you may know in my email uh, the night before I quoted Helen Keller and Helen Keller was was born um, in 1880 and after about a year 13 months she had an illness which left her blind and deaf. She said this when I die, death is no more than passing from one room into another. But there's a difference for me, you know, because in that other room I shall be able to see. Helen Keller was greatly helped when her parents found a companion, Anne Sullivan, who was able to communicate with her by touching her hand and sometimes touching her arm. And Helen Keller mentions a great moment in 1887, so when she was seven, uh, because before that, when Anne Sullivan was making marks on her hand, uh, and maybe in the other hand holding something, Helen Keller, the little girl, didn't always connect the, the shape on the hand, the letters, with what she was holding. But on that day in April 1887, Anne Sullivan poured some water on one hand and while traced water on the other, the letters water. And Helen Keller in her autobiography, The Story of My Life, wrote this. I stood still, my whole attention fixed upon the motions of her fingers. Suddenly I felt a misty consciousness as of something forgotten a thrill of returning thought, and somehow the mystery of language was revealed to me. I knew then that W-A-T-E-R meant the wonderful cool something that was flowing over my hand. The living word awakened my soul, gave it light, hope, set it free. I love that line. Suddenly I felt a misty consciousness as of something forgotten suddenly that memory of words and communication and understanding. As you can tell from the quality of her writing, Helen Keller 
uh, became a writer. In fact, ended up writing 14 books, hundreds of speeches on all sorts of topics. Uh, one on Mahatma Gandhi, she campaigned for those with disability, for women's suffrage, labour rights, world peace, peace. The Nazi youth burned one of her books, uh, which is probably always a sign that you're on the right side, dare I say. And she campaigned throughout her life for all sorts of things. Inspirational, if you look her up on YouTube, you can see her uh, communicating with, uh, again helped by two friends, but also she learned to speak a little bit. She was slightly frustrated that she couldn't speak clearly, but although she was still deaf and blind, she was able to speak. Here are some of her quotes. My friends have made the story of my life. She was so conscious of the time and patience of those who spent so much time with her tracing out letters, though if you look at the videos they were able to do it very very quickly by the end, but tracing out letters and gently helping her to communicate. She was much valued, her friends. And then this, so much has been given to me I have not time to ponder over that which has been denied. That's quite a challenge. So much has been given to me I have not time to ponder over that which has been denied. And all of us may feel that we have been denied things in our lives which we would have loved to have had. But Helen Keller was able to say, so much has been given to me. She was a thankful person. She says this, four things to learn in life, to think clearly without hurry or confusion, to love everybody sincerely, to act in everything with the highest motives, to trust God unhesitatingly. To trust God unhesitatingly, to act in everything with the highest motives, to love everybody sincerely, to think clearly without hurry or confusion. Not a bad quartet. And then this. For three things I thank God every day of my life. Thanks that he has vouchsafed me knowledge of his works. Deep thanks that he has set in my darkness the lamp of faith. Deep, deepest thanks that I have another life to look forward to, a life joyous with light and flowers and heavenly song. Helen Keller never saw light or flowers and never heard song, but she trusted in God and the existence of heaven and felt one day she would experience this. Which takes us back to our first quote. Death is no more than passing from one room into another, but there's a difference for me, you know, because in that other room I shall be able to see. The last quote. When one door of happiness closes, another opens, but often do we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one which has been opened for us. If anyone would like these quotes, then do please email and I will send them to you. Of course, the whole theme of being able to see clearly and hear clearly is marbled through the scriptures. In Leviticus chapter 19, there is a command to the people of God. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. A reminder of how we treat people with disabilities, whatever they may be. And then the great promise, Isaiah 29, 18. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. When all things are restored and renewed in Christ, then the deaf shall hear and the blind shall see. And then Matthew, sorry, Matthew describing Jesus' reactions to John the Baptist's disciples. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you he who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. 
The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. We may know that throughout the Gospel accounts, Jesus' healing, healings of the blind and the deaf have huge spiritual significance. We are called to see clearly spiritually. We are called to hear clearly, and that's a good thing to pray for. And one day in heaven, all will be clear in our sight and in our hearing. So this week, prompted by the All Souls quote, may we give thanks for Helen Keller, her courage, her thankfulness, the friends that she had, her faith. May we treat people with disability as best we can. May we remember that in some ways we are all disabled, we all have disappointments, but let's be mindful to be thankful for all that God has given us and the doors that have been opened even when others have been closed. And so to our final prayers. Through Christ, the firstborn of all creation, we pray for respect for the earth. Through Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for peace for earth's peoples. Through Christ, King of Love, we pray for love in our lives. Through Christ, Lord of the Dance, we pray for delight in the good. Through Christ, Divine Healer, we pray for forgiveness for past wrongs. Through Christ, the Morning Star, we pray for the grace to make a new start for ourselves and for our world. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Blessings on your weekend. And now these final words. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.